Hi, this is a very brief tutorial about how to deliver our Leadership 360 report to a client. And let me walk you through this. Here is the front page. We might rebrand this, but you get the idea. Um, I, this first page, I really just described the process that got us up to this particular conversation, the number of people that were uh, in the interviews, the time frame, et cetera. This is where I would also encourage you to let them know that this 360 is based on a couple of things. One, the context of where this particular person is going in their career. If they are about ready to retire, the context is going to be very different than if they were about to take on a new team. So we want to make sure that we solidify that. Number two, is that this is a 360 focused on their opportunities for growth, not to simply collect a bunch of examples of where they are strong. This next page is really a lens on how we see learning because a lot of the conversation you may have with your client may relate back to this particular page. For example, behavior follows perception, meaning that we do not simply give people a bunch of tips and tools and ideas and TED Talks and expect that behavior will change. Behavior will have to change based on some sort of aha, a paradigm shift, a new mindset. And so when you think about action items, make sure that they have the mindset to follow it. Organizations change when their leaders change is basically a concept that says that people are watching your client more so than the client probably is aware of. That large scale organizational change happens when the leaders make those changes. It is not the world of do as I uh, say and not as I do, we actually need authenticity. Communication agility uh, creates stronger connections. A lot of your conversation, I think, is going to be centered on how people deliver information and how they deal with stress and how they make decisions and the ability to have agility in those communication um, modalities such that there is no static between their your client and the person they are trying to talk to. So agility is extremely important in terms of being able to get people to understand and buy into a message. Strengths become uh, derailers. Basically, this is an idea that says that a strength is something that we should obviously want to continue, but when stress comes into play, that strength can become one of our weaknesses. And so a person who is very bold might very well want to continue being bold, but when stress comes into play, they might become a bit of a um, a dictatorial micromanager. Uh, leading uh, learning stops when something is known. Basically, this is an idea that says that um, when we think we know something, then learning stops. And so we want to continue to encourage our clients to ask questions and be inquisitive. And then lastly, companies and teams follow an S curve pattern. This basically is like the human body we grow, we mature, we eventually die. Teams are the same way, so are leaders. Um, and so it's important to understand where you are in that S-curve pattern. And that doesn't mean that you have to die per se, but you might need to recreate, reinvigorate, come up with some new visions in order to rebrand and create some new momentum. Uh, this is a page that I sometimes add. It's subject to your own understanding of what's needed. This one, I just had an overview uh, this particular example was for a CEO, and I wanted to give him a context for this entire 360 and some key uh, recommendations for him and his entire organization. This is certainly optional, but it's not a common thing that we do. Participant profile basically is the number of, is the percentage of people based on the Raider group. Self, subordinate, direct report, and leadership are some of the common types of Raider groups. Uh, the, the percentage is basically the percentage of people that are part of the entire group that fall into those subgroups. Um, and then we start getting into each of the comments that this person is being rated on. Note that the color coding on the top does not match or is any way related to the color coding on the bottom. So on this one, uh, around uh, this statement that says Michael establishes an open and safe environment enabling others to speak up. 33% green on the top means uh, somewhat agree, no, excuse me, strongly agree. So that's the best you can get. 33% was that sort of that teal blue and so forth. So of everybody that participated in this particular uh, 360 on this question, 
Um, about 33% of them said, yes, absolutely. 33% uh, said uh, somewhat. 13% uh, said slightly agree. And then the pattern follows from there. So red on the top does not mean anything about red on the bottom. The bottom part simply means is that what did that person give themselves? This was a four out of a six rank Rankert score or Likert score. Subordinates gave that person a 4.3, direct reports gave them the 4.3 and so forth. Keep note of this because you're gonna see patterns once in a while with these 360s where you'll see that maybe the self, the individual you, you're coaching um, is consistently lower than all the others or direct reports or peers are, for example. So you might wanna make note of that as you deliver that in your message. So now that same question shows up, but now we have three things, the summary, the recommendations, and the sample comments. Um, this is where you would just simply um, go through um, some highlights. I do not suggest that you read every one of these. In preparation, I would suggest that you might come up with a couple of things out of this page that you want to highlight, but this is not um, necessary that you go over each bullet point. And then the pattern just continues to follow all the way through. Uh, we've always got the numeric to start with, followed by the, the written comments. Um, when you finish the particular uh, conversation uh, with your person, um, I would suggest that you do a couple of things. Ask them to read this thoroughly and then to make, to make some notes. Have them consider everything, but know that some things will be appropriate for them to uh, take seriously and some things are not. There may be a few outlying comments that just don't make sense and they, they should not pay attention to it. Have them touch into or uh, connect to their intuition as to what feels right to them, even if it's new. And then for them, number two is to come back to you at your next meeting and um, discuss with you the things that they would like to start taking action on. We do have an MFI Leadership 360 uh, scorecard if you want to use as a way for them to capture some of these action items into a form that you can um, reference in uh, future conversations. And then um, number three would be for them to get back to all the raters and thank them for participating in this 360. And then number four is obviously you guys need to come up with that game plan and really start making that part of your coaching uh, focus moving forward. Hope that helps, good luck and um, reach out if there's any questions.